All right, welcome back to the channel. Well, we we got our parts in finally for the carb rebuild kit. So I thought we'd uh, show you any important things on here. Here, we'll do that right. You shouldn't see nothing if I show you that. So yeah, you got it from Mike's Carb Repair. Um, the nice part, what I like about when you get some from from uh, Mike's, the carb repair. Oh, oh, uh, show you the yeah, Mike's carburetor, carburetor and injector parts is um, you also get the e-manual download whenever you buy something. And there's a time limit that you have to download that. But, I mean, once you have a downloader on your computer, you have it for life. Um, and that's nice because, you know, if you're like me and brains were not your smartest uh, thing. Brains aren't your smartest thing. You know what I mean. Um, here's the uh, information. I'll put a link down in the description, but not a sponsor. But hey, Mike's, if you're ever, you know, wanting to hit your boy up. Um, but their kit, the K7009, see if I can show it there. It's actually for all Marvel Schiebler. I'm surprised saying that on Schiebler. Schiebler? 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 Um, models so it's got a few different um gaskets in there for depending on what um body style you have and a few different things which is nice because i have a lot of my olivers run this style so there's times when i just need that gasket if i need to tear it to do something so i figure nice kit to have it'll be more than just this and pretty reasonable i mean you talk about when you go to your your farm and fleets or your tractor supply company you spent like 25 bucks on this kit you spend 32 dollars on this kit and you're getting a whole lot more i mean i'm no expert but look at your small parts there versus this one the only difference is in this one you get um i believe the choke lever no no you're getting the throttle no oh that's not good I don't think that ball it had to do with. I think that was already on the thing. Oh, um, you're getting, you get a throttle maybe, a throttle, but that's not even for the right tractor. So put that back away. But um, you don't get it on this one. But if you need that kind of stuff, they also have it because I also got the float from them, like twelve bucks. And it looks like before I break the seal on it, it does appear to be the same. So. Let's go ahead and buy this. I'm pretty sure. I know with the with the carb kit, once you open it, you own it. Yeah, it looks like that's gonna that's gonna work just nicely in there. So a whole free float. A float that'll actually float. Which will be nice. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and purchase this kit as well. So that's what made it kind of a little bit easier. Just because, I mean, I still have, it's actually his old kit back there from the 60. Because, I mean, he gives you, okay, we'll do this. We'll kind of show you what all we get in this. I'll get a Ziploc bag. So you get, this is for setting your float adjustments and other odds and ends measuring. Most good carb kits come with it. So you get, um, the large, the medium, hopefully this is a small one, and the small, which is the one we're gonna use, gasket, so again, nice that you get all three in one kit. And the same way with um, your your uh, intake, your carburetor intake gasket, three as well there, so we'll only use one of those. Um, I won't, I'm not gonna get all this stuff out. You get a new needle and seat, uh, with gasket and separate the nice part is so this is its own part so you can order this part because I mean, a lot of these little parts you might not need in every rebuild but you would probably want a new needle and seat for sure the, the needle um i still gotta try and get the seat out of that old one so you could just order this part again and then you could have this kit could last you for three and then there's a whole mess of different things in here between different seals 
gaskets for things, um, different throttle, different, um, you know, adjusters for your fuel adjusters. Um, these little felt ones that go on different cables, all the stuff that you're supposed to do on a, on a rebuild that I hardly ever do. Um, and it all depends on what model you have. Like, so mine uses this style, so let's look at used again. But, um, yeah, you can, there's all sorts of goodies in here. So yeah, this will get me through a few different rebuilds that I'll be doing. But for now, the most important part is I wanted the gasket and I wanted that float, which was obviously separate. But we'll make sure the gasket's gonna work. Move out of there. Well, the gasket material, I believe. Oops, if it goes the right way. Hope you guys can see that. Yep, looks like the right gasket. Perfect, perfect. We'll save these other two for a future project. Again, either the 1550 if it needs a little bit of tickling on the carburetor. Carburetor. All right, so let's start reassembly. What I like to do a lot of times is get a new... Let's go ahead and just commit to uh, getting a Ziploc bag for this stuff. I'm just going to put all the littles out here. What I should do is have a container. Hold on, I'm bringing it right back. All right, we're back. Just got another magnetic tray and put all the odds and ends in there. Makes it a little bit easier, and then all the metal parts will stick in. There's enough metal parts to kind of hold all the other stuff together. This rag here. So there should be a little gasket. Nope, that's too big. There might be. Every time I say there should be something, then there won't be, and then I look like a moron, so but there could be a gasket for that. Maybe not. That one might not have a gasket on it. It looks like it should though. Of course there's like 17 little gaskets in here. <laughs> do do do. So yeah, we'll get this all taken care of. Oh, also while we're trying to work on this and multitasking here with the old thinking brain is um we did get the super running the other day remember the super 88 i got videos many long time viewers remember the um no no those works um the uh the radiator went out on it before we moved to this house took the radiator out had to get custom radiator made so spent the big bucks on that um and ended up, uh, can't talk, um, ended up needing a radiator in it, and then it needed uh, quite a bit of other, needed a custom radiator built. But we had to move it, so it's been driven a couple times since, um, since then. Anyway, long story short, we finally got it actually running the other day, which is good. That thing had ran for a long time, so it was nice to finally get that thing. We popped it off. I still got to do some other work on it. I didn't film that because I'm going to have to uh, um, do some other things on it to get it. But we didn't, we get, it's kind of tucked away in the barn. If there's a video, I'll put a link in the description to the last video we did on the Super where I was kind of starting to work on it. And then I can remember how the thing went back together because it's been like a year. And because of that, um, it ended up, we didn't want to run it back in the, in the, where it's at in the barn for very long because the risk of like starting the barn on fire is high and that's not worth it. So hopefully this next weekend we'll get back out there and actually get it running, moved outside, all that fun stuff. And I'll bring you guys along for that. I just figured you guys need to see how I was trying to get it started because that tractor's always started 
like really really nice like popped off sets since it sat for a long time a lot you know quite a few times and this was the one time that it decided no i don't want to start in the condenser actually ended up being bad in it so we replaced the condenser and the points and got it working so that was nice i feel like i did something backwards there Maybe not. Anyway, so yeah. So that's exciting stuff there. So that's nice to get that thing back and going again. Because it had been kind of, well, it had been kind of been a while that that thing needed to get running again. So it's nice to have that thing actually as a running tractor. So we'll get that thing going. I, I want to kind of take that one to Dutch Days. That tractor show in um, a couple weeks, in two weeks, here in town. We'll see if it actually goes or not. I mean, the thing is hideous. And dummy, you got to put the float in first. Um, the thing is kind of hideous, so I might not take it. But I'd like to take it. It'd be kind of fun. Okay, where's that float case? Here we go. Make sure we get his little card there. <laughs> we never did get that out, did we? I don't know if it's that, that seat's going to come out of there. If it doesn't want to come out, we're probably going to do the right thing and just uh, just say that's its new home forever. We did soak it with some stuff. But I got the feeling that there's no way that it wasn't want to come out. Oh, yeah. So... We'll cross that bridge if it doesn't want to work later. We'll do the smart thing. We'll just put a seat needle in it. It's not stuck. Ooh. I'll show you how to test this here in a second. Come on. Professional filming right here. So I get the big bucks on YouTube. All right, so what we need to do here is, see, how did that go on my old parts? Where's this needle? There it is. Oh, this thing didn't have, it might not have used that. It might have just used the old hover method, but I bet it's gonna be better because the other one didn't have this little uh, clip in there. Let's see if I can show it to you. A little clip right there. And that clips onto the float, like so. That And that actually helps, it helps uh, pull the, the needle out. So what'll happen is, we put this in there. Not realizing that I did not really clean off this gasket material very well. That's nice. That looks professional, Kyle. Extremely professional. You feel like, has anyone else done this? Like you buy a thing utility blades this size, so you always have enough. It should be a lifetime supply. And every time you need to get a blade, you have to get a new one. Is that just me? Am I the only one that does that? Because I feel like I'm, I feel like everywhere I've ever worked that's had that, I'm always losing my blades. We'll just quickly clean that off. Good enough. Oh, get that out of there. You don't want pieces of cardboard in all the small passageways. It helps out. Uh, it helps it out functioning wise. Works works much better. That'll kind of clean up. Just clean that up real good. There we go. Good enough. Perfect. Okay, so now. I was just showing you how the float works. I wasn't actually putting it on for real because I forgot to put. Yeah, I was just doing that for the test. That was just a test, folks. Yeah. Because you got to put your gasket on first. There's nothing else that gets screwed into that. Nope. Okay. So, folks, that was just a test run. It's like that uh, Tenacious D song. This isn't 
the best song in the world. It's only a tribute. If you know who that is, then you like Tenacious D. They're a little wild. Okay, let that little brass piece go. Okay. Now here's where you do your other thing you're gonna have to do, which is adjust the float. So basically how the float works is, I'm gonna try and hopefully show you guys this. See, if you blow in it now, nothing comes out. You hear there's no air movement. So when the gas fills up all the way, there'll be gas at the bottom of this, it's somewhere, somewhere in here. And there's ways you use the little measuring tool. They give you this little thing here and you measure some stuff here, maybe, I don't know. And then when it's like that, so it doesn't let any gas in, but if it's the floats like this, where it's lower because it's getting, it, you gas is getting sucked out and getting atomized and gets lower, then, well, it's supposed to make the sound of of, of, of Russian wind there. Hold on. Wait a minute. This is a dandy of a video. Is, there, is that thing plugged? Hmm. I'll bring it back. All right, we're back. And definitely glad that I filmed this stuff because there was still some schmoo stuck down in there and it was not it was not going to let the stuff happen that was going to need to happen so me demonstrating how a float works instead of just putting it together saved my bacon so thank you viewers because if i would have done that without that would have been quite embarrassing quite embarrassing we wouldn't want that you're not allowed to embarrass yourself on YouTube. That's that's the one rule. As I embarrass myself every time I make a video. But that's the that's the deal. That's the dealio, folks. So yeah, um, other not, other news things coming up. Fancy stuff is again. Yeah, we got Dutch days next weekend. Not this Saturday, but the Saturday after. So we'll demonstrate the right way. So again, float closed. No air movement. You can't hear nothing. Float open. You could hear that, but that was the sound of air rushing. So again, it's paint everywhere. I just took this outside and gave it the uh, the brake clean overhaul. So that goes like that. And again, then you set. You can set this by bending either like this tab back here. So it sits up higher when it actually goes to shut it off. Because again, you want it to, if the fuel doesn't shut off, and we talked about this in the last video, but I know they get into it. On an updraft carburetor, it's not as bad of a deal because if the float goes too high, some of these holes that are in here, essentially it will leak up high enough into the carburetor and then it'll essentially go into some of these passageways here. You see that? I don't know if you can see it because of the light, but there's passageways there, and it will go into essentially it'll it'll start pouring out usually out of this hole down here. There's only a hole in the bottom of it, so I got like um like a grating in there, so it's not too much dirt gets sucked up into there, but fuel can can pour out or pour, it'll pour out on the carburetor is what I'm trying to say in so many. Eloquent, 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 eloquent words. Um, but on a downdraft carburetor, if for some reason, now those, the, the advantage on these is your fuel pumps usually, your fuel tank's usually higher than the carburetor, so the fuel will always run into it and pour out. But if you have an, up, or a, sorry, these are updraft. I'll correct. On a downdraft carburetor, like what's on like a V8, if you leave your fuel pump on and then this float's stuck, it can it'll fill the motor up because it'll pump it up and it'll pump up and over and go down the intake and next you know you'll hydrolock a cylinder full of gas and that's a bad time so it's not as it's important to have that thing set right because if it's not set correctly it's not going to run real well but we're definitely the tractor guys have it a little bit easier in setting them up 
versus the uh, um, the automotive ones, we'll say. Okay, look at this. Well, start again using way too small of a screwdriver for the application. My other ones that I was do when I put this torso apart are no longer here. Well, they're in the car because I worked on the tractor. The one problem when you have your tools everywhere is then you go to use them, you don't have them. Let's get that back up. Obviously, it's later tonight, so we will not be um, starting this up. But I wanted to at least get it back together tonight, and then maybe tomorrow after work, I can uh, we can light the fire in this thing and let it run for a little bit. Or maybe one day, one of these nights, some night. These will tighten up here. I mean, the advantage is the tractor carburetor is as about as simple as you can get. There's no accelerator pumps on this style, you know. It's pretty, it's very simple, very simple. Now, remember on the last video, I was talking about the difference in these two carbs and some of the differences in the one, like this one had this little like locking tab. See, the difference is this one does not have the locking tab. This one does not have the locking tab, um, but it has a spring on that. So, When you, which I believe there should be a gasket for the bottom of that, maybe. Not that one. Maybe this one. Not that one. Maybe not. We're going to go maybe not, because I don't think these gaskets are going to work. Nope. Yeah, that's not going to work there either. I don't know if that's, that's too small. Anyway, um, so this has a spring on it. So the spring would hold the tension against there. It would also keep it from um, loosening up. Because it's even though it's putting pressure up, you'd think, oh, it's going to make it want to loosen up. Well, yes and no. It would make it want to loosen up, but, or no, it won't because it's going to be putting pressure against there and, what makes it loosen up is they get is if they're not tight, like because you know this bolt's not going to go all the way down to the bottom because otherwise it shuts fuel off. And if it's not tight and it sits there and spin, it you know it can sit there and spin. But if you tighten it up against, well, that's not right. Not right at all. Really, have a Nimca poop on this one. If you're talking. You should probably look at what you're doing and not just start. Making sure that thing gets started straight. That's better. I wonder why is this thing kind of going in tight? Oh, because it's going in super raw on there, dum dum. That looks a whole lot better. And I usually go tight and then just loosen it up a little bit and let some fuel in. We'll get the rest of that adjustments later on. Okay, this goes here. I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, let's just turn that up. And then you gotta do. And one thing this kit has um, is if you want, is it has all of the gaskets and different things for around the throttle shaft. These ones are pretty good. If they're not leaking or you got air leaks around them. I don't always do those, to be fair. Get this uh, throttle shaft in there. When I worked at Super Cup, we'd have to, uh, some of our throttle shafts were so like tight, you'd have to like hand machine them, or like, you know, kind of hand smooth them out. If you did it too much, then they wouldn't run, or they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to idle. You want to make sure it's chamfered where it's like this and like that. So it's actually going to close up when it angles. If you ever wonder why, how, which, which way it goes. But 
give you little screwdrivers and delicate hands to do this kind of work. Oh wow, this is terrible. This is, this is like, I should just start putting in all the animal noises on this project. This is, oh my, flippity, flippity. Oh, hold on, hold on folks, I have the tool for this. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I have a tool that definitely won't work to do this. Cause it's way too big of a screwdriver head. Maybe not. Yeah, it's way too big. But I can pretend it'll work. Definitely not gonna work. Dang it. I think those are actually for my great grandpa I am in. That set that screwdriver. I have some tools from him. I mean he and he passed away I don't know, long before I was ever anything. But well, I'm going to do some of this little tedious stuff that is really annoying and makes you want to say words that YouTube doesn't like and I don't like to say. So, hold on. All right. I figured out what my why I was not working out so well for me. So, I had the wrong bolts. Oh, the wrong screws. I guess these would be considered screws. Not bolts. So, that was fun. Luckily, I have an identical card next to this thing so I can look at that one and, and match the bolts up. So, yep. That's slightly embarrassing. Sometimes what I've done on these before, and I'm not doing it on this one just because in case I have to take any stuff back apart, is I'll put a drop of uh, Loctite on these bolts, especially these throttle bolts, because if these things wiggle out, again, especially on a, oh, I'm gonna strip, strip that bolt out, um, on a downdraft carburetor, they can they can fall down and go into the motor. Hopefully here, if they fall, rattle out and fall out, it the suction with the engine might pull it up. More than likely, it's going to fall back in there. So that's my hope. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that is what my hope is. What happened? Hmm. Hmm. Where'd this thing go? <laughs> Did I not watch that? Ugly. 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 Not there. Oh, that's not good. Oh, there's right there. Hmm. Hmm. I know what that goes to. I don't think I lost this. So again, your float drain. It's if you're gonna store your via, if you're gonna store. Um, oh, the other nice part, um, if you're gonna store your tractor for a while without any fuel in it and not be using it for a while, as long as it's nice to, uh, you can drain the fuel out of there, so it'll set. The other nice thing is a lot of the stuff that Mike's carbs part sells is ethanol safe, which is nice for in the fuels that we get today, because I, you know, I try to always run no ethanol fuels, but sometimes you just, you get what you get. You can't get the the right feels for some of this older stuff so <laughs> remembering where stuff was I should probably watch the video again that's not the same Screw down here. This should be your idle control. I think it's an air bleed. So the farther you pull it out, it's gonna change that circuit up a little bit. Okay, go all the way down. I think this one was like one and a half turns out before. I think. Could be wrong. Hopefully I'm not wrong. I'll be right back. back. Alright, sorry about the little delay there. Delaying game was well for you guys it was half a second. For me was frantically trying to remember where parts went. And then remembering that I think I had some extra parts 
laying around here. So we're gonna try and put the choke together now. We got the throttle together. We got the idle, main jet, that bolt, whatever that thing was. Um, that's still clean, so. And these are always kind of fun because they, what they basically have is, I've always called it like a backfire protection. So essentially if you have your choke closed, like this, and it's closed, and your choke is closed, it's basically like blocking the front of this, like you should block it with your hand. If you ever needed to choke something and need a little extra choke, you can put your hand in front of it. So if you had it, if the choke was closed and the engine backfired really bad, well, if it didn't have this little thing here, this little spring device that snaps forward, get a screwdriver underneath there, and get the snap, 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 snap. It would basically try and find another place to go you know, for the for it to go boom, boom. And you don't want it to go anywhere else other than right there because it could, you know, be an intake manifold. It could be the carburetor. It could be, you know, things that are like made of metal that you don't want evacuating um, places. So that's what that's for, which is why this has to kind of go in like that. So, this spring in here. I think it goes like that. Oh, no, it's gotta go. It can't attach to itself. Make sure that's got enough spring so it's always wanting to pull it forward just like that so when you're pulling in the cable and you push the cable it's going to want to go that way and then this is where this is an operation where it can cause much um gnashing of teeth we'll say because i think i can go i think last time it was on like this which was terrible. So I think I'm trying to go like this. I'm going to do this without on camera so you don't have to hear what I say. <laughs> As you can see by the time lapse, that was zero fun putting that thing back in there, but it is all done. Should be good to go run. We'll try and run this in the next day or two. We'll bring you along. Thanks for watching. Um, again, I didn't use even a quarter of these parts because I threw this in together, but here's where you get all your carburetor parts. That's what I would recommend. Good parts. Um, should be good to go. We'll get this thing fired up here in a little bit. Well, next video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.